Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias from The Automator, and um, we were having a discussion today. Today we're going to be talking about the future of using AutoHotKey, especially with computer vision. Um, now we're talking about in the future, right? It's not there yet. But uh, last week, let me go ahead and share my screen here. We were talking with the client, and I was like, hey, you know, in ChatGPT, you can upload, let's see what this does with this, upload pictures, and then say, like, um, please... Right. And it will start going through, and this is like computer vision, and the, the, the thing's looking at it and can describe it, or you can say what's wrong with this picture or whatever, right? Um, yeah. Really, really interesting and in how accurate it is. And there's often context as well, like it understands things. It's really interesting. Um, we were like, wow, this is really cool. And our client we showed it to was like, oh, I don't really see the value. And, and, and yeah. at, at that point in time, we didn't think about the the big ramifications of it, but this morning I was watching another video, which I'll try to remember to link to that in the description, of of like a hundred uses of computer vision with ChatGPT and, and it, being able to see it. And what dawned on me is, and Isaiah and I both, we we kind of poo poo on and frown upon people who use auto hockey and use image searching because it's so unreliable and it's it's just you can never share it across computers and even on the same computer if there's different resolutions of different monitors there's it just it's just so unreliable right and if you're doing stuff on a web page those images often change right or they'll purposely change some of the color and inflection behind it to make it difficult and just make it hard to automate but this is what occurred to me of like holy cow once we have it where chat gpt can be evolved and ai we could basically say hey i want to be able to highlight this but i want to be able to click this in chat gpt every time when you do that now when it's running it will be looking at your screen and figure out oh you have the dark theme on or you don't have the dark theme on or your resolution is this it will figure that out for you and so suddenly image search in that frame is going to be very reliable right because the the one problem here is we as humans we tend to I'll do a lot of processing right. behind the right. screen that that you don't really think about. We know what to ignore and what it was similar, right? Like it's in two very cool even thought. because I grab this one image, put it on a different screen that is smaller, and I can still know where the button is. And you did that without thinking. Your right. brain calculated all that, right. took into account the distortion that this. This monitor is bigger than this one. And for that reason, the button should look smaller. All of that is happening on your background without you even thinking about it. But the computer, you have to tell it everything, every single detail. Now, we don't have enough time to go over every single variable. And that's what ChatGPT is going to do for you. You give it an image, you give it two different images and say, find the same button in both. And it will find them for you, you without you even having to do anything, right? Now... This reminds me of another client that we had that he wanted to do something similar. He wanted to say, hey, is it possible for me to feed an image into chat uh, into chat GPT and that it tells me in what location that button is so that I can feed that back to auto hotkey and right. do the automation for me? He, he was really sure. seeing that at that yeah. time. The only right. thing is that when he was asking that, Chat GPT, you could not upload pictures yet. Right. Right. So we didn't even have a way to do that. And I told him, hey, how about if we use the Google Vision? You you showed us Google Vision right. and API right. that we were uploading an image. And then we said, hold on. If the image is too big, every time you have, because one of the things is that he wanted to do that real time, right? Right. And we were saying like, yeah. you know, yeah. you have to send hundreds of pictures. Like just imagine 23 right. pictures a second. Just you have to send 23 pictures a second to ChatGPT, get the information back, and then react to it. That's not really feasible. But we're getting that was not even six months ago. I guess it was right. almost a year right. ago, right? Yeah. Now ChatGPT probably has an API for me to send pictures to it. So we're right. getting closer to it. Right. And and in the video you sent, well, you could highlight a part a, a section of the screen and tell it. What is this? And just highlight one part of it. And he would say like, well, that what you selected is this, 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 and that. And I was like, getting closer to it. Just highlight the button and say, hey, find this button in all the other pictures I'm going to send you. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. You know? And what's really cool is 
it will be smart enough at some point to say, hey, I'm going to use what I used last time and look for that. And if I find it, I'm going to click it right. Not, I don't have to go do an API call to figure this out. But if it can't find what it's looking for, now it's going to go reprocess it, which is going to take a little more time to do, right? But it will it will figure it out and then use that one going, or maybe use even a weighted average of like two out of three times as this one or the last most recent weighted more, but it'll it'll figure all that stuff out. The, the other thing I was going to mention is Ace, which is also something that I saw in that video this morning, was he was giving an example of looking at a, a he had a picture of a watch and said, what what time is it? And, he, and they got the chat GPT totally got it wrong. Right. So yes. he asked it three times and said, no, no, it's this time. No, it's this time. No, it's this time. And then from then on, it got it right. So if you're doing something with training tool, to do. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You can actually give it a few examples and tell it this is the right answer and it will actually improve that fast, right? And start working for you. So if you do have bad results, don't just say it doesn't work, right? Yeah. Train it. Like it's just, yeah. it's, we're, we're, it's again, we're, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it, right? Like where we're going with this, it's going to be so amazing. Soon it's going to be so cool. We are really getting into this. Star Trek or, you know, oh. <laughs> Star Trek time where right. the AI is going to be looking at your screen and then you just talk to it and say, hey, I just want you to go to Google, search for this one thing, open the first page and do this one thing. And the freaking AI is going to do that for you. You no. do not have to do anything because it will know that if you want to browse the internet, it has to click this icon that has to do with browsing has to go this place to put the URL, has to find the three first links. You know, it's going to be amazing. So I do really envision, and that's the cool thing, not that far off, seems right. like right. a place where you will not need a mouse or on a keyboard any longer. Yeah. You just talk yeah. to the computer and it does it. Well, the, and right now, the way, you have to do it through the app, right? But that was honestly why I told Isaias this morning I signed up for the full version, which is why... In the browser here, I was using ChatGPT4. Was I signed up for the twenty dollars a month? Because mainly, if you're using the phone app, you can literally talk to it, and it'll talk back to you. And not that I need someone else talking back to me. I have a teenager for that. But <laughs> it really will be convenient. Of like, I can't wait for my Alexa to be able to do that. Right? Like to be a smart conversation and ask it something, and it will give you a very good answer. Right? Um, it's really wild. That's awesome. I, I was just envisioning also it's like, you know, can you imagine you're sitting here? It's not going to be long where you're going to be talking, literally, like you said, talking to it and either from the web, and maybe it's looking at you with the webcam or listening to the tone of your voice and be, detect that you're depressed or that you're whatever. And, and might even like offer up faster music or something to be like, cheer you up, right? Like there's so many things that are going to be wild. Um, some hopefully we can turn off, but now. Yep. Let me segue a little bit into a very interesting topic. So I was talking about a future without mouse and keyboard. But before yep. that, what is going to happen is that we might be able to use auto hotkey to connect to chat GPT or have a way to have chat GPT interact with our scripts. And basically, the automation part of auto hotkey is going to become easier as we have been talking about searching for images on the screen, which has been a pain for a long time, it's going to become easier. But other things as well, like, hey, I just want to write a script that will do this, 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 and that. And it will definitely yeah. go ahead and point you in the right direction of, right. hey, this is what you will have to do without a hotkey. Not only that, it will write the code for you, sadly, we're still not at a place that it knows about V2, right? right? But I guess it will be. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. By, by the way, something you mentioned earlier, not having a keyboard or a mouse, right? That reminded me, have you seen Star Trek? I think it was called The Way Back Home. It was the version number four where they went back in time to San Francisco and saved the whales. Did you ever see that one? So, there, Scotty, you know, the engineer, goes up to the computer and he's like, oh, let me show you. And he goes, computer, blah, 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 blah. And and the, it, the guy goes, hey, use the mouse. And Scotty's like, oh, what age are we living in? And he goes, computer, blah, blah. He tried talking into the mouse, right? Like, it was it was so funny. 
just because you're in it. It's like, wow, they nailed it, right? Like, right. Gonna, you know, we, we we probably will have something like that at some point. Oh. Like, yeah, we're not gonna oh. need a mouse and a keyboard when I can just tell it what to do. Right. And and in the hero calls on Friday, um, one of the hero members was wanting to do this. He wanted to use ChatGPT. Well, he really, basically, he wants to be able to talk to his computer and have it listen and grab certain things as a variable and then change what he's doing, right? Like he's, and, and Connie is awesome. He's, I forget, over 80, right? Like I think he just turned 80 or he's over 80, but he's he's doing this stuff. It's just really cool to have people that are seeing the future, doing stuff with this. Um, and we're like, we're, Connie, we're like, we're really close, man. Like we're so close to having it do that, um, but it's oh. it's not quite there yet, but we're we're right on that cusp. Also, another hero member was, he was saying how, cause he's like, I don't really use auto hockey. I don't code in it. And um, so he's trying to use AI for writing stuff. And I tell him like once a week, almost, I try Bard and um, ChatGPT and what's the other one? Um, there's Anthropics. Uh, um, there's another one, um, Claude. Right. Those three I try all the time and none of them are offering up V2 code. But I'm like, look, if you're not a serious programmer and not a hotkey, it does know V1 pretty well. Right. Stick with V1 for now. Right. Um, and Or have it write your V1 code and then take that V1 code. And if it doesn't have a GUI, run it through the V1 to V2 converter. And it quite possibly will you know, it, give you it, a it, very good starting point. But it, yeah, it's far it, better than trying to get it to write V2 code at the moment. <laughs> The, the the main idea is remember whatever v1 can do v2 can do and whatever v2 can do v1 can do the only difference is how you write it but you can do the same things in both okay yeah. if you want to create files move well, your mouse do it like it's, it's, you can do it with both languages it's, it's just the it's way how of, you write it down it's kind of interesting as i ask because if you think about it we've talked about this a lot of like why do you do v2 over v1 v2 it doesn't work any faster you know, it's but it gives you when you're writing code, you're gonna have cleaner, more intelligent code because V2 does a better job of working with objects and keeping things not in these little weirdness that V1 did, right? Oh. Now, when you think of extrapolate that to if I'm using AI, then we don't care the code, right? Yeah, like we don't back care. to where like that doesn't matter, right? Like so it's it's a really exactly. interesting point of like you can yeah. stick with V1 and use uh, an AI tool for now, and of course. At some point, it will be in the um, AI. V2 will be in the AI, but that's just, we're just not there yet. But that's right, right, yeah, keep it in V1. I was telling in the hero call, I said, I, I you know, I, I plan for the next decade to have V1. Like, I don't anticipate me not using V1. I'm just writing stuff in V2 now. And I have been recently starting to do stuff in V2. Um, and I do, it's a little hard to make that switch in the sense of your habits, right? And mainly because we have bad habits, but yeah. Um, I'm starting to get used to it. Um, and I do like, I read it a lot with you and Irfan and seeing what you do. And I, I do like the syntax itself. It's just when I try to write something, I put in that first comma come. like every yeah, time. It does, yeah, it doesn't show up yeah. as easily, right? But it is is the same with any language. It's usually easy. Yeah. Whenever you're learning any language, even spoken languages, it is easier to understand than to actually talk. Uh, uh, yeah, gotcha. Right. So, so producing language is harder than understanding it. And that's the reason why it's easy for you to look at the code and say, I know what it's doing because it's very similar. Now, when you have to think about how to write it, your brain is so used to V1 that yeah. it might be a well, little bit different at the beginning. And depending on what you're doing, often it's actually kind of hard to tell if it's V1 or V2 code, depending on, you know, if you're creating a GUI, it's obviously, you know, but other stuff, like if you're working with a com object, they're so similar, right? Yeah. Like it's, man, it's, it's very subtle, but anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, like I said, we're really excited. We keep testing stuff. Let us know if you want us to keep creating videos, talking about how things are going to be. Like to me, this was just a big aha of like I really saw how normally we kind of dissuade people from doing image search stuff. However, image search with an AI doing the search, is it's like a fuzzy match, right? Yes, like yeah. the AI is going to say, oh, that's what I'm looking for. And that to me is just a game changer of telling people image search isn't so bad anymore, right? Like if yeah. we get that, it'll it'll be viable. Awesome. All right, thanks everyone. Cheers. Bye.